See, to stay married 13 years, you have to learn the rules. And I found out rule number one is, if she ain't happy, you ain't happy. And if she ain't happy long enough, you're going to be unhappy with half your stuff. That's right. Fortunately for me, I discovered early on that women are complicated. And once I understood that, it, it, it made it all a little easier. But, but I have found that because women are complicated, they like to think men are complicated too. Because I've heard women talking with each other, ooh, I wish I knew what he was really thinking. I'd give anything to know what he's really thinking. Well, this morning, ladies, I will tell you what we're really thinking. We are really thinking, I'd like a beer and I'd like to see something naked. That's it. I wish it was deeper than that. It's not. From the age of 15 to the grave, that's all it is. I'd like a beer and I'd like to see something naked. You go to a nursing home and see a 90-year-old man going down the hall on the walker. That's what he's thinking. I'd like a beer and I'd like to see something naked. Oh, not that, not that. And I do believe women understand men better than men understand women. What do you think? Think about that. When's the last time you saw a guy stomp out of the room crying and a woman going, what? What did I say? Come back. But if women understand men better, it's because they study us. Have you ever seen women's magazines? Every article in there is dedicated to men in relationships. Now, how to get a good man. How to get rid of a bad man. How to turn a bad man into a good man. You ever see men's magazines? Nothing but pictures of naked women. That's what we're after right there, fellas. There she is. Somebody get me a beer. And I'm not saying guys aren't willing to learn about relationships, but I can tell you we're not going to sit down and read magazine articles about it. If you want us to have this information, you've got to sneak it to us. You know, put it into the play-by-play -play of ball games or something. And there's strike three. Greg Maddox really looking good today. And speaking of looking good, fellas, from time to time, your woman needs to be reminded that she's still looking good to you. <laughs> hey, baby, have I told you lately you are as pretty as Greg Maddox? I know there's probably a lot of people out here this morning going, well, you know, all this stuff is about marriage. It doesn't apply to me. I'm single. I'm not ever getting married. I'm just going to date, 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 die. Yeah, well, that's what we all thought at one point. Then you wake up one day, you're staring at two kids, a mortgage, and a minivan going, how the hell did this happen? I was just trying to get laid. That's how it happens. Because when you're single, so much of the focus of relationships is on the physical end of it. Shoot, I know single guys that can take anything a woman says and turn it into a sexual innuendo. You could have a group of people standing around and a woman could say, you know, I need to get my tires rotated. I know single guys that are like, yeah, I'd like to rotate her tires. <laughs> Whereas married men are more like, you need to get your tires rotated? I know a great place right down the street. They can do it on your lunch hour. They're quick, they're easy. Matter of fact, I think I got a coupon for them here in my wallet. Yes, sir, there it is, right where my condom used to be. <laughs> I like to be in single. I don't think I'd want to be single again, though. For one thing, I wouldn't want to have to take my clothes off in front of somebody new. I'm telling you, when I was 20 years old and had to do that, I'd leave the lights on and actually strut a little bit. <laughs> Lord, not anymore. If I had to take my clothes off in front of somebody new, those lights would be out and I'd be going across the room like I was being shot at. <laughs> I like the permanency of marriage. I never did like breaking up. And I'm, everybody in this room has, has, has broken up dozens of times probably. We've all heard the same lines. You know, the ones like, I need some space, which is actually half a sentence. Rest of it is without you in it. <laughs> I always love that other one. You're too good for me. 
Oh, please. Cindy Crawford's too good for my brother, but if he ever hooked up with her, she'd have to burn his ass out of the house to get rid of him. My all-time favorite, I think we should start seeing other people. Trust me, nobody ever said that one to you without having somebody else in mind. <laughs> Fellas, if a woman says to you, I think we should see other people, trust me, she has already cut a pony from the herd, and if she ain't riding him yet, she has pulled the saddle out of the barn. I've had single people say to me, well, you know, sexually, it's a lot more exciting when you're single. I don't know about that. You ever try to do it in a house with two little kids living there? We put our babies to bed. My wife and I are running down the hall, pulling off clothes like we're hitting the beach at Normandy. Go, go, go. Take it off. Go. Daddy, no, they got me. Start without me. And if it is more exciting, it is with a price. I'm telling you, with all the diseases out there today, being married is kind of like being in the National Guard. We may not be seeing as much action as the front line, but we are living to fight another day. And besides married people, we tell you, you do not get married to get sex. No, getting married to get sex, that's like buying a 747 to get free peanuts. Well, if all you want's peanuts, there's a lot cheaper ways to get them. I mean, it is true. Things are going to cool off a little bit. I've got an aunt, Uncle George and an Aunt Doris. They've been married 62 years, and they love each other. But if they're sweating in the back of the car, it's because somebody locked them in the trunk. But consider this for a minute. There, there are advantages to long-term relationships. I mean, for one thing, over a period of time, you start learning what your partner wants and, and what they need and what they like. See, when you're with somebody new all the time, you have no idea. It's like playing pin the tail on the donkey blindfolded. Go a little bit to the left. No, the other left. You're not even trying. Or you're, or you're, or you're in the same room with me. Come on. See, after 13 years, I have learned the combination to my wife's safe. 28 to the left, 12 to the right, 9 to the left. Ah! You're welcome, baby. Dun -dun 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 -dun. And you ought to work on your technique, you should, because that's the only thing, part of this whole process that we have any control over. Because I know whoever said God created all men equal has never been in a locker room. And women, bless your heart, you think you have a handle on this one. I've heard you talk. Well, if he's got big feet, then you can tell. Or if he's got big hands, then you know. Or if he's got a big nose, or if he's got big ears. Well, I tell you something, he better be packing because that's one goofy looking guy right there. <laughs> and as silly as it is, men still worry about this stuff. And women, bless your heart, you're always trying to put our minds at ease. Oh, honey, don't you worry. It is not the size of the ship. It's the motion of the ocean. Well, that may be true, but I know it takes a long time to get to England in a rowboat. <laughs> and talking about time, don't be in a hurry with this stuff. Because I have learned through the years, sexually, women are kind of like diesel engines. You know, it may take a little bit to get them going, but once you do, they can run a long, long time. Men, on the other hand, we're more like bottle rockets. Ooh, ah. And I don't know why that happens, but it does. There is some kind of energy transfer taking place in the sexual act. Because we get finished, my wife can jump up out of bed, run into the kitchen, make a sandwich, vacuum the living room, and clean out the garage. You might as well put crime scene tape around me because I ain't moving. <laughs> one time I tried to get up and go get a glass of water. I looked like a newborn giraffe on one of those wild animal shows. <laughs> God bless you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for your help in the past. And in the future, enjoy the rest of your stay here. Take care. Thanks, y'all.